Good morning, students. Welcome to the interactive smart board light classes. Today, I'm going to continue with chapter five, recording weather, okay, element that is called rain. Now, as you know, the process by which any form of moisture like water droplets, ice crystal, sleet, etc., falls to the ground is known as precipitation. So, any form of moisture which is falling from the sky, okay, any form of moisture which is falling from the sky in the form of water droplets, ice crystal that is snow or sleet that is uh, okay basically icicles etc which falls to the ground is known as precipitation precipitation occurs in various forms but rain is the most common form of precipitation is the most simplest form of precipitation other forms of precipitations include snowfall ice crystals okay hailstorms solid precipitations, sleet, icicles, okay, drizzle, okay, drizzles are very light rain, okay, less than a sour, okay. Now, when the rain falls to the ground, this rain has to be measured. The amount of rain that falls over a given area is measured by an instrument, by an apparatus that is known as rain gauge. That is known as rain gauze. G A U Z E gauge. Rain gauge. Now, now if you look at this picture, this is a picture of a rain gauge. Okay, this is a picture of a rain gauze. It consists of a metal cylinder. Okay, now I'm just going to mark it with a red pen. Okay, this is a metal cylinder. This is a metal cylinder. It consists of a metal cylinder or jar. This can also be called a jar. Okay, so here also it is written there metal cylinder with a vessel placed inside. So here you have a bottle or a collecting vessel which is placed inside this metal cylinder, okay? A funnel is set on top of, its, of this jar that fits it accurately. But above this bottle, you know, at the mouth of this bottle, okay? Here you can see a funnel is placed. A funnel is placed on top of this jar that fits it accurately inside the metal cylinder. Rainwater is collected in the vessel through the funnel. So rainwater is collected. So if it is raining like this way, okay, it gets collected, okay, inside the funnel. And from the funnel, it goes into the bottle, okay. The hole in the funnel is very small or is kept small, okay. So that the evaporation rate is kept to a minimum because we have to see that the water does not evaporate from the bottle okay at the end of the period so okay at the end of the period this water collected is then poured in a measuring jar okay so you can see here this is the measuring jar this is a measuring jar okay that is graduated okay or marked by a scale that is marked by a scale you can see the scale here okay in millimeters and centimeters. So remember that rainfall is always measured in millimeters or centimeters. Okay. The gradation on measuring cylinder is such that the reading is obtained is the depth of the rain. How much rain is collected in the bottle as well as in the funnel. funnel okay. That has fallen over an area equivalent to that of the top of the funnel. So the rainwater gets collected up to the brim, brim of the funnel. So it has to be equal to the brim of the funnel. To measure snowfall, the snow is collected, melted, and then measured as a rain. The snow has to be melted. Then only we can measure in a, okay, mel okay, rain gauze. 
The reading is taken at an interval at a gap of 24 hours. Remember that the reading of this okay rain gauze is taken at a gap of 24 hours. Okay. A self-recording instrument for measuring rainfall is also called okay by uh, uh, there is another instrument which is also called pluvograph. Okay. So I'm writing the name of that instrument P L okay U V I O pluvo G R A P H graph. Now it records both the amount of rainfall. It records both the amount of rainfall. So the first point is amount of rainfall is basically calculated by the pluvograph. The second one is its duration, its time, okay, on a graph paper. Okay. Now when using this rain cause, you have to okay basically follow certain precautions okay or precautionary measures. The rain cause has to be placed in an open area where there is no obstructions okay or bada or obstacles or hindrance away from trees and buildings and even the flagpoles. This is also done to ensure ensure means make certain that splashes of water or falling of water from the building do not cause the rain gods to collect extra water. The apparatus is placed below the ground so that only 30 centimeter of, re of it remains okay above the ground. Why? Because the, so that the animals do not knock it down and to prevent splashing and evaporation of water okay, collected in this vessel okay now we are doing wind okay okay now we are doing wind moving air is called wind but when there is pressure there is horizontal movement of air that is called wind and vertical movement of air that is called current. Wind is guided by the distribution of atmospheric pressure. Now, what is atmospheric pressure? That I have already explained to you in the previous chapter. Okay, force exerted by air on Earth's surface. That is known as atmospheric pressure. There is an uneven heating on the Earth's surface by the sun due to the curvature of the earth and the angle of the sun rays. Now, whenever I'm talking of the curvature of the earth, okay? Let's see the earth curvature, okay? Now, if I make a sun here, okay? If I make a sun here, okay? Okay, if I'm making sun here, this Direct rays of the sun are always felt at the equator, which I have already told you, okay, many times. Okay. But you find slanting rays of the sun in the pools. Why? Due to the curvature of the earth as well as the angle of the sun rays. Some parts of the earth receive direct rays like the equator. Okay. Receive direct rays of the sun and are warmer this area becomes a warm area okay this area becomes a warm area whereas other parts receive like the north pole and the south pole receives slanting rays of the sun and hence these areas are cooler okay than the warmer parts of the earth the land as well as the air around it gets warmer and lighter and expands due to the heating of the sun okay during these areas okay in this latitudinal positions okay now i just want to show some picture okay let's okay now if you look here this is the thermal factor heat and cold which is okay due to the rays of the sun this is due to the rays of the sun and here I have marked a boundary. This is called tropopause. In both the regions, I have marked tropopause. And you can see here I have written equator, yeah, polar regions. Now, when the direct rays of the sun, okay, basically hits land, it not only hits land and water, it also hits 
air around it. When the air is heated up, it becomes lighter. In physics, you have studied that, okay? Lighter air rises and expands, or warmer air is lighter, okay? When the air rises up, when the air rises up, what happens? When the air rises up, what happens? This area is left vacant. The lighter air expands and rises up till it reaches tropopause. So when this warm air is rising up, when it reaches the final or initial layers of the troposphere here, that is called the tropopause, this air becomes, okay, cold. Because Gases are found in this layer, okay? Many gases are found in this layer which reacts with the warm air as well as the wind which is blowing from the north and the polar regions also, okay, comes in contact with this warm air which makes this cool, uh, a warm air cooled. Remember that. This, so what happens to the cold air? Cold air sinks due to the gravitational force of the earth. When the cold air is coming down, it creates pressure, it creates a high pressure zone. But here, when the warm air is rising, it creates a low pressure zone. It creates a low pressure zone. Now, another thing that you have to understand is I have already explained to you in the previous class. This picture also I have already explained in the previous class, okay, that, okay, wind always blows from HP to LP, okay, which, co which causes the movement of wind, which is called pressure gradient force as well as wind drained force. So whenever we are talking about HP, high pressure zone. Now, okay. whenever I'm talking about HP, wind always blows from high pressure to low pressure. So what happens? Wind is coming out from the high pressure zones. And, okay, entering into the low pressure zones where the vacuum is created. So this becomes the outflow of winds, okay, outflow of winds and, okay, here I am making another picture. This is LP, LP, LP means inflow of winds, inflow of winds. So this wind which is moving from high pressure to low pressure is the direction of the wind or the movement of the air which is also called pressure gradient force or wind gradient force. The greater the difference in the pressure, the stronger the wind blows and stronger the disturbance, stronger the deflection which also I have explained in the previous class. Gentle moving wind is called breeze, okay? Which is also known as Manda Vayu, okay? There are two characteristics of wind. Okay. There are two characteristics of wind. Wind blowing in a particular direction. Wind blowing okay, in a particular direction. I am writing only direction here. So, I told you that wind always blows from a region of high pressure to a region of low pressure. Okay, there is another example. Okay, wind blowing from the west are called westerlies, and wind blowing from the east are called easterlies. Okay, number two. Okay, wind has speed. Now, whenever I'm talking about speed, I'm talking about okay, the velocity. I'm talking about the velocity of the wind. This velocity is caused by the high pressure zones and the low pressure zones, okay? Wind velocity depends on the difference between high pressure and low pressure. If there is little impulse provided, so if there is little impulse provided, pressure is very low, so less disturbance. If there is more impulse provided, high disturbance, higher pressure, okay? This is also often okay, referred to as Coriolis force. Now, we are moving on to measurement of the wind, okay? Now, wind, okay, basically, we are moving on to measurement of the wind. Now, I'm writing wind measurement. Measurement. 
measurement. Wind is measured by a weather van. Okay, you can refer to your book also, also known as wind van or weather cock. Is an instrument used to determine the direction of the wind. Okay, wind is measured by a wind van. Okay, wind van. Okay, or a weather cock or a wind weather van. Now, it should be placed in an open area where the wind is not blocked by buildings or trees. This instrument for measuring the wind also should be placed in an open area where it is not blocked by wind, okay, by buildings or trees. So, it should be placed on top of a building. A wind vane consists of two parts. A wind vane consists of a wind vane consists of two parts now what are the parts now in your book you don't find these parts okay so i have labeled it okay now the first one is the pointer now i am co coming to this pointer okay and number two is a fixed f i x e d fixed okay marker now i'm going to show you what is a marker and what is a pointer okay now in your book also you have this picture okay now this is a wind wind this is a wind wind okay a pointer is mounted on a pole so this is the pointer okay so so this is a pointer this is a pointer mounted on a pole this is the pole i'm talking about okay that moves freely and points to the direction from which the wind is blowing so it moves freely when the wind blows around okay the movement of wind okay so when the wind is blowing the second one is a fixed marker now fixed marker means a fixed marker which shows cardinal direction north south east and west are the cardinal directions and this is also known as a fixed marker this is known as a fixed marker they mark the direction of the wind a fixed marker which shows cardinal direction namely north, south, east and west to determine the direction of the wind. The second one is, okay, the anemometer. The speed of the wind is measured by an anemometer. It has four semicircular cups. Now you can see there are cups like a botuko, okay? There are cups. There are half circles. There are half circle cups that are fixed to a rotating shaft. So, these cups rotate, but here, okay, is the main rod, which basically helps to, okay, stable the cups. It has four semicircular cups that are fixed to a rotating shaft with the help of thin rods. So, the movement of the wind causes the cup to spin. When the wind blows, it causes the cup to spin. The inward cup of the, uh, curve of the cup. So, here is a space that. The inward curve of the cups receives the maximum amount of the wind speed or the force of the wind or the power of the wind. And below it, you have a meter. There are two things. One is four cups, one is meter. A meter attached at the base records the number of spins and measures the speed of the wind in kilometers, not power per hour on Beaufort scale. You can refer to table number, okay, a table on page number 48 okay that is known as beaufort scale okay i'm just showing you this beaufort scale how it is measured okay now i'm going to make it a little bit bigger okay now this number beaufort scale number is the force there are many different types of force of the wind and this is force number zero this is force number one this is force number two if, if there is force number zero there is a calm weather and here is the symbol which is used. And the knot of the kilometers per hour is calculated less than one. And you can see effect. Smoke rises vertically. So these are the things that you have to remember. Okay. Beaufort scale was made by Sir Francis Beaufort, a British admiral, okay, in 1806 CE. He built this Beaufort scale for the Navy to sail the boats in the olden times. 
However, it was standardized in 1923 CE. So this is the force and according to the force, okay, a wind is guided. So you can basically, okay, according to the force, if the force is 6, what kind of, okay, wind the description is that? Strong breeze, okay? What is the knot here? 40 to 50. And what is the effect or observation? Large branches in motion, whistling heard in telegraph wires. So you can see this is the force. According to this, you can calculate the wind, okay? This was for today. Hope you find this lesson useful. Thank you for listening.